This is part two of the multispectral imagery lab, uh, working with the Micasense Red Edge imagery in Metashape. And at the end of last lab, we had made it all the way through doing the uh, calibration, the reference, uh, sorry, the reflectance calibration on the imagery, and uh, all the way to making our ortho mosaic. And I had you sort of create the ortho mosaic using the average function with the uh, color blending. Um, for this lab, we're going to do a couple of things. So, based off of uh, some discussions that we've had about sort of exposure uh, issues with the or exposure sensitivities with the, the red edge camera and uh, some of the color balancing problems, and when you're stitching the ortho uh, together, I did a little bit of research, and uh, there actually are some tools within Metashape that can help us address those challenges. And so we want to look at some of those. And then in the second part of the lab, we'll look at creating uh, band ratio indices, so like NDVIs, other vegetation indices. And then we'll talk a little bit about how to export these, uh, the orthos and the, the band ratio uh, indexes out of Metashape so you can use them other places. All right, so the first thing that we want to do, so this is our ortho mosaic we created last time using the average uh, color blending. And, uh, you know, we've still got some areas that are maybe blown out a little bit uh, with color, but otherwise it, uh, it, it looks pretty, looks all right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And uh, we're going to remake this ortho mosaic using the mosaic color blending. Okay, so we will uh, rename this one to Ortho Mosaic uh, Average. We'll call it Average Blend. Sounds like a really weird coffee. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and recreate this Ortho Mosaic, and now I'm going to use the, the sort of default mosaic blending mode. Um, and I'll let that rip. And it's going to take a minute to do this, so I'll pause and come back to it uh, here in just a second. All right, so here's our ortho mosaic with the uh, uh, using the mosaic blending. And if I if I sort of toggle back and forth here between the two, you can you can see some of these sort of coloration differences here. Okay, um, so I'm going to actually duplicate this again. And uh, we're going to sort of keep these these other two, the average blend and the um, we'll call this ortho mosaic. Um, call it, um, mosaic blend and uh, no correction. Okay, that's a mouthful, but that'll sort of describe what it is. And then in this one here. Um, this will be our mosaic blend. Okay, the one that we'll actually do the corrections to. So, uh, if we look at the seam lines here, you can sort of see kind of like where some of the problems uh, originate. So let's let's sort of pick this uh, area here just as a as an example. So this is likely coming from one overexposed image that, that Metashape is sort of like uh, picking over uh, other photos in that, in that region. Okay? And there's actually a tool in Metashape that we can use to like tweak or sort of modify these seam lines and to tell it which of the um, images we would like it to use in this uh, in this area. Okay, it's called the Assign Images tool, and uh, we, for to to sort of get to that tool or to take advantage of that tool, we need to create uh, a, a polygon on this image. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a shape here. Right, we're we're not building rocket ships, so this doesn't have to be like super precise. Okay, um, so there's our polygon. The the border of the polygon is red, so that means it's selected. And if I right click on it, then I can come down here and choose Assign Images. Okay, And that's going to pop this box up. And this is a listing of all of the photos. These are the ortho-corrected photos. 
um, all the photos that, that sort of like fall within or intersect this polygon boundary. And uh, if I click on one, you can see rank one. So this is the sort of preferred photo for this area. Okay, it's not covering the whole area, but it's pretty overexposed. All right, and so that is actually translating into the, the that, that sort of overblown or blown out sort of appearance that I'm getting in the ortho mosaic. But if I look at image two, it, it actually looks pretty good. It's maybe a little dark, but it's certainly a lot better than uh, than the others. Image three actually doesn't look too bad either, right? Okay. But if I select image two and I hit OK, okay, now we've just told it we want it to use that specific image for uh, this polygon that that I uh, that I digitized. Okay, and so it's already looking better, okay, but We've got sort of a hard uh, boundary here uh, from our shape, and this change is not permanent yet. This is a temporary change. And so to lock this change in, we need to have Metashape update the ortho mosaic. There's a couple ways we can do that. There's the update button here on the toolbar, or I can right click on the ortho mosaic in the workspace pane and choose update ortho mosaic and this will lock in the changes to the uh, ortho mosaic and and force it to use that one image that we wanted it to use so i will go ahead and hit okay here it's going to take a minute or two to uh to run that and uh, uh update that ortho mosaic and we'll come back at that point okay so the update has finished and uh it's looking pretty nice here if I actually toggle back to some of these other versions of the ortho mosaic, here's the original prior to correction. So we've addressed this sort of blown out sort of portion uh, here. And even if we flip over to the average, you can see the average just sort of really washes out this whole region, right? So um, I'm feeling pretty good about, you know, kind of what we have in this area here. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, digitize another polygon in, in this area here. And uh, you know, it's possible that um, you could digitize some larger polygons and just kind of take uh, care of this in sort of one fell swoop. Um, or we could just sort of a priori try to screen out some of these uh, overexposed images. Um, certainly seems like the Red edge imagery is really sensitive to uh, uh, multi view, multi angle view effects. Um, but uh, let's look at this sort of other polygon here. Okay, so this is a bigger polygon, so there's a lot more images that overlap this. And uh, some of them sort of make up the full area, and then some of them don't, right? And, and some of these images that, uh, that, you know, sort of don't occupy the full area may be ones that we want to use or keep. And so in this case, we can uh, check this option at the bottom to allow multiple selections. And then uh, if, I, if I select one, I can, I can use the check boxes to tell if we want to tell Metashape if we want to use it or not. And then I also can use the arrow keys on my, uh, on my keyboard to just kind of go through these uh, uh, images here and pick the ones that I want to, uh, oh, that's a really nice one, I like that one, um, that I want to use in this in this case, okay? So, um, so I'll just pick a handful here. It's probably sufficient just to actually, in this case, pick number 12 that covers the full area, right? Because that's a, that's a nice looking image. All right, but I, I picked a handful of these, so I'll go ahead and click OK here and uh, you can see I've got a blue sort of like cross hatching on the polygon. Um, because there's multiple images here, there's like, it, it can't just like sub the, the sort of other image in and, uh, um, you know, kind of show you what that would look like. So this is just kind of a cue that there's a, a change that's pending and uh, I'll need to, uh, to update that. What I'm gonna do though at, at this point is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and digitize a couple of other polygons and, and you know, sort of address some of these other uh, color sort of blending, color balancing issues. And, uh, and then I'll go ahead and do the update all at once. And uh, I'm going to do that offline and then I'll come back uh, when, I'm, when I'm all done and we can kind of uh, explore the image a little bit from there. All right, I'm done here and 
I mean, there's probably more I could have done, but I think you guys get the idea. And uh, what we've got here is a lot nicer looking ortho mosaic at the end than when we started. Um, the the sort of color is just a lot more consistent. The illumination is a lot more consistent across the whole thing. And if I compare this corrected version with my uncorrected version, right, you can see we've addressed a lot of these sort of bright spots in the image. And even comparing it with the, uh, with the averaged uh, one, we're doing a lot better job, especially here at the, at the margins. Okay. The reason that we needed to use the mosaic uh, blend mode for this rather than the average blend has to do with um, what Metashape is doing with the, uh, with the assigned images. And so with mosaic, it's just going to pick the best image um, or the single image that sort of fits within these, uh, uh, within these seam line polygons. With the uh, average mode, it's going to average the value of all of those images together. And so um, the uh, effect of just picking one image or just a handful of images for, a, uh, uh, for, for sort of addressing these color issues just isn't as uh, pronounced with, uh, with average mode because there's still all these other images that it's trying to average together in that, in that area. So the results seem to work a lot better using the mosaic mode than the average mode if you're going to uh, be, be updating the ortho mosaic uh, and, and specifically assigning images. Okay, so that is the, uh, the sort of color correction part. So let's... Um, talk a little bit now about uh, band ratios and uh, how we do those in Metashape. And uh, we can come up here to Tools and Set Raster Transform, or there's this sort of paint palette icon on the main toolbar. You can just look for that. And uh, it's gonna pop up this raster calculator box here. And uh, notice that the bands uh, from the multispectral orthomosaic are listed from B1 to B5. That's how you're going to refer to them is actually by their numbers. Um, and there's a sort of space here that we can uh, we, we can sort of like create our band using uh, um, just the formula for it. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll we'll enter in the uh, uh, equation for an NDVI and. Uh, I'm going to just start typing, and I've already entered, I've already done an NDVI here uh, in the past, so it remembers that and it just sort of auto fills that in. But notice I just used the band numbers, so B5 minus B4 divided by B5 plus B4, okay? Actually, that should be B. This is a normalized difference red edge index. We want a normalized difference vegetation index, so near infrared. Uh, divided by red or near infrared and red is part of the NDVI, okay? And uh, so once I'm happy with that, I see the green check mark here. That means Metashape is happy with my math, okay? And then I need to make sure that this button here is checked, this enable transform. And if I apply this, then here's my, my NDVI sort of layer, right? Okay, NDVI values can range from negative one to one. Um, it's you know most typical that you're going to get values uh, above zero and and you know probably not quite as high as one. Um, important point here is that uh, Metashape has not actually changed anything relative to this ortho mosaic. It's just showing us a different view of the ortho mosaic that's defined by this formula. Okay, so I can uncheck this box and apply that, and I get my original uh, ortho mosaic back. Okay, so these are just transformations. It's just a different way of displaying the ortho mosaic data. All right, I can add a, a, a different one here too. I could add that uh, normalized difference red edge index that I actually had the formula for uh, before. Okay, let's look at that one. Now, to, uh, to apply this, look, I hit apply and nothing, nothing changed, right? That's because it's actually still using this first uh, uh, output band, this first NDVI layer. To change that, I have to go to the palette tab and then uh, tell it to use that second band. And now, this is really confusing, right? The original input bands were numbered one through five. 
and then my output bands are also listed as like B1, B2, right? Which is just like not very helpful, but that's what we've got, okay? So I changed that to B2, and now if I apply that, then you can see sort of the change reflected uh, in, the, in the image, okay? The other thing you can do in this palette tab is, uh, is change uh, to a different uh, color scheme. Um, and uh, so I kind of like this NDVI color scheme that they have. And when you change, if you change bands, um, you know, sort of back and forth, um, it's, it doesn't automatically update the range and the, the sort of color distribution within that range. And so if you, if you change back and forth, you need to refresh it with the little sort of recycle button and then hit the auto button to, uh, to spread the colors out across that range, okay? Um, so there's my normalized difference red edge index. I can switch it back to in DVI, right? And if I just hit apply, look, it looks really weird, right? I've got no sort of discrimination here in the sort of upper end of the NDVI spectrum. Well, that's because the, the, the scale is wrong. So if I refresh the scale and then I use auto to spread the colors back out, okay, then it's readjusted that. So it's a nice kind of a visual representation and it's using all of the sort of color space that's available to it. All right, so on this page, you know, make sure you set the band uh, correctly to which one you wanna look at and uh, refresh and then use the auto to spread the colors out, okay? All right, so those are the raster transforms. Again, click on the palette, check the enable or, uh, transform box or uncheck it if you wanna sort of turn your band uh, ratio on or to get your original image back, okay? Uh, so for the lab assignment, I want you to go ahead and create an NDVI, and I want you to create a, uh, a second sort of band uh, ratio or band index of your own. Uh, use something different than this normalized difference red edge index. Um, there will be some links in the lab document for uh, a whole bunch of information on different vegetation indices, or you can try making up your own. I guess that's okay too. So um, let's turn this back on. And the other thing to sort of note or to, to look at then is what has been the effect of these color corrections that we've done on our vegetation index values. So here's our corrected one. And if we look at the sort of area that has not been, or the uh, version that was not corrected and the sort of average one, right? There's some sort of minor differences here. Let's, uh, let's come down here. This is a spot where I know that there's some some differences down here in the sort of lower left corner. So here's our corrected version here. And our mosaic blend not corrected. Check this out. There's a sort of this artifact here that you get from one of the original seam lines where it was sort of piecing in an overexposed image uh, against sort of the, uh, the, the other images that were not so overexposed, okay? So the corrected version is, is you know, quite a bit different in, uh, in that area. So one of the last steps for the lab assignment is, uh, you know, zoom in, find an area where you're, you've done the color correction, and then give me a screenshot of the corrected and the uncorrected uh, version for that area, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll use some of the lab questions uh, in the write-up to kind of look at what the differences are between those. Okay, so almost done here. One last thing that we want to look at is how do we get the data out of, uh, of Metashape so we can use it in a, in a GIS or remote sensing package. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. You pick your uh, ortho mosaic you want, you right click on it, you go to export. There's a bunch of different options here. Typically, you know, I'm just exporting as a, as a JPEG or a TIFF. Um, you know, make sure your coordinate system is set right um, or set to what you want, something that's appropriate. Metashape does a really great job with projecting into different coordinate systems, so it's, it's pretty efficient to let it do the hard work rather than trying to reproject a, a raster data set in another package. Set your, uh, your pixel size to, to whatever you want. This option right here, raster transform, this is important. Okay, this is where you tell it if you want the original ortho mosaic, when you would choose none, and so that in this case would export the uh, the five band multispectral uh, ortho mosaic, 
or if you want your your sort of vegetation index values, um, then you choose your index value, and that in this case for our NDVI would give us the actual like you know negative one to one uh, values for that. Okay. If you choose index color, it's going to output RGB values for the uh, for the display here, which is yeah, it's a representation of NDVI. But if you're going to analyze NDVI someplace else, this is not the information that you want. So make sure you choose index value if you want the um, the actual like NDVI values, and choose none if you want the original ortho mosaic. And then the other uh, settings here are either related to other um, formats or they're ones that we've talked about in other labs already. And so when you're when you're ready, you just hit export. You'll give it a, a file name and a place to save it, and uh, and you're off to the races. Okay, so um, pretty straightforward, and that kind of wraps up our um, uh, look at multispectral image processing in MetaShape. Mm -hmm.